Uh, welcome, Tina, to Serving Up Support. We're thrilled to have you. I know you've been tuning into earlier sessions and um, you kind of know the drill here, but uh, we at Branch Food have worked with Tina and Survey.com for um, a lot longer than may um, be, be realized, I think. Tina and I uh, worked together at the MIT Enterprise Forum previously, and um, now that she's at Survey, we're thrilled to be working even more um, closely together uh, through her work there. So um, Tina is the marketing and data innovation lead at survey.com and Tina has experience in launching and scaling consumer goods companies working uh, on top brands such as Procter & Gamble, Gillette, Ralph Lauren, um, and numerous other um, uh, brands, probably informally giving her um, brilliant uh, knowledge and advice and guidance uh, with so many companies over the years. Uh, Survey.com brings together field reps, data, and technology to help brands win, brick, win in brick and mortar retail. Um, given the current COVID climate uh, and environment, um, it's created you know, just a lot of chaos and, and however, opportunity. Um, so Tina will focus this presentation on trends seen in store, what brands can do to get through this period, um, and what they can do as well uh, to start preparing for the eventual new normal. So Tina, we're thrilled to have you. Thank you so much for your time and, and um, information uh, that you'll be presenting today. Uh, and I'll turn it over to you to get started. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for tuning in. I'm thrilled to be um, chatting with you guys today. Uh, so my focus is gonna be on brick and mortar retail. I know shopping patterns have completely changed in the last three weeks. Um, things that never used to be uh, something that you found on Amazon are, are now things that you're ordering on Amazon. But right now I'm gonna be focusing on what's happening in brick and mortar retail and what the buyer behaviors are changing as. Ah, I guess this doesn't, there we go. Um, I think all of us have gone into a Whole Foods and seen this as the shelves. This happens to be the water and beverages shelves. I think we've gone into CVS and this happens to be, in my opinion, the perfect shot for today. On the left is everyone getting through cleaning supplies because you wanna make sure that your home is clean. On the right is absolutely no paper goods except for a few puffs because toilet paper is the thing that people are coveting today. And at the very, very end are two shoppers covered with masks trying to keep everyone safe, including themselves. The situation today, and I think everyone has read about this, but it really is impacting on every level. Shoppers have completely changed their shopping patterns. Everything is disrupted. They're shifting. They're bulk buying. You've heard the word panic buying. Retailers are focused on their customers. They're focused on safety and the essential products, and they're backfilling as quickly as they can while focusing on the people that are in their stores, both their employees and the shoppers. Brands, for all of us that are in the food and bev with Branch Food, Food and Bev are seeing huge spikes as people are um, buying and consuming goods in the home and not in restaurants or food service or any other way outside of the home. So you're really focusing on bringing it home. So um, there's big spikes now and the question is gonna be, how do you deal with today's disrupted data, today's disrupted patterns, and how are you gonna adapt to it? E-commerce saw an immediate spike, then they saw really delayed um, delivery times and finally out of stocks. And now they are just one of many things that are going on in people's shopping patterns. And then the supply chain, it is stretched beyond capacity. Um, what no one ever thought was gonna happen, running out of toilet paper. Um, and I used to work at Procter & Gamble, so I remember very clearly hearing, there is enough toilet paper to fill everyone doubling up at home twice. And we've actually proven that that hasn't happened, but what we've proven is people are hoarding toilet paper. So adapting as quickly as possible is key. And this is not fun if I'm just sharing the dark pictures of what it looks like and empty. Um, so what we're gonna talk about today is what you can do, what you can do now and in the near term, and what you can do in the near term, including planning for the longer term. I think what we could do, all of us, is assess your situation, within the category and channel, strengthen all of your relevant investments, communicate with all of your partners, plan ahead, and never forget to innovate. So on assess the brand situation category, if your category is sought after, 
you're in the best boat right now because you're going to win as your category wins. If your category is an indulgence, you might win as an impulse purchase in the retail store. You might also win because people are home bored and shopping online and they're looking at an influencer saying, these are seven things that runners should be looking at. And they might pick number two and number two might be your brand. Or is your category an afterthought in these crazy times? And in that case, you're still important. You're still important to those people that are really committed and need your brand for whatever reason they need it. So if they're looking for you as an allergy free option, that is not going to change last, you know, last month, this month or next month. So stay in touch with your core consumer. If you are what I would call an afterthought product category in an environment such as today. Knowing your channel and knowing what's going on in your channel is super important. Right now, what is key is really the broad categories of channel. Grocery number one, drug as well, mass because people are going into Target and Walmart, convenience because people are no longer using the subway or using public transportation to get to a store. They would rather go to the corner store and they kind of feel that community feel of talking to their neighbors and um, supporting the little guy. And then e-commerce, because in the absence of the supply chain having gotten to someplace close to you, the internet is your supply chain. The other thing to think about is, if you're in a test market, although you're currently winning, if you're a food and bev brand and you're spiking high, like all the other categories, the test market is not going to be something that that buyer is going to be looking at to extrapolate. So your test market will probably be extended. So if you thought that you were in the Northeast category of, uh, Northeast region of Whole Foods, and that meant that winning now meant a quick, easy rollout into the rest of Whole Foods, you might need to prove yourself in the non-panic buying situation so that test market is gonna be a bit longer. And the reason why is because today's data is an outlier. The exception to that will be the category buyer that is gonna go by their gut and say, these guys won in a crazy environment. They were able to maintain their supply chain in an unprecedented time. And this is a company that I wanna keep on my shelves. So you might actually get that win but it's not going to be from data. It is going to be from them trusting their gut. And if so, congratulations, you're winning. Finally, product launches are getting both delayed and are finding completely new ways of finding their next consumer. And this is where knowing what's going on and planning for the future is key and also planning for flexibility. So pretty pictures. Um, I'm going to let you take a moment and take a look at the picture on the left and think about this, not as a shopper, which is how we always look at things on shelves and say, oh, my favorite flavor is there, whatever that flavor is. It might be watermelon on the top shelf on the left. It might be grape on the next one. It might be black cherry, which is the third and the fourth. Spindrift, either clearly just restocked or is not popular. Now we happen to know it's a Boston startup, so we know it's popular. Um, and then the strawberry flavor is very, very fully stocked and uh, is probably the one flavor out of the five of Waterloo that is going to win because it too will be bought when people are simply buying uh, drinks and beverages to have at home. So when the Waterloo brand manager looks at the data and sees that it sold through because they're going to see at the end of the week data, they're not going to realize that really the more popular flavors were all the other four flavors. And um, over analyzing and over extrapolating the data is not going to be to your benefit. So having this midpoint data of black cherry is clearly very popular. Um, is, is much more important than knowing the data at the end of the week. I'm assuming this makes sense to everybody. And since we're going to do questions at the end, I know I'm not going to get the feedback. I normally would love the question back from you guys. 
On the right is what happened after a third party merchandiser, and this was of course us, that's what Survey does, filled it in. And so that looks perfectly stocked. And then from a brand manager's perspective, this is where you're like, for today, this is great. In an ideal world, what I would wanna do is put my top SKUs at the top, the SKUs that aren't selling as well at the bottom, and that is going to be the right balance for all of us all the time forward. But I wanted to have something very, very colorful and a brand that is competing, backfilling, getting stuff on shelves and communicating with the consumers so that there is an example of what works well. So now is the time where you look at everything that you've done in the past and of the things that are going to serve you well today and near term, you strengthen. So if your product is already on the shelf, so this is not the people that have a launch coming up, but if your product is already on the shelf, you are really ahead of the curve because you are getting all of that possibility to be shocked of many more feet going into that store and people looking and really thinking about what they want to have in their home. What are they going to be drinking and eating today, tomorrow, next week? If you are a stable, a staple, um, the information that is relevant to your category and retailer is actually more relevant than whatever brand communication that you are putting into the marketplace. So people are buying rice, people are buying chips, people are buying chicken, people are buying easy to consume things right now. So if you are a flavored seltzer water, people are kind of buying a flavored seltzer water and lemon seltzer water more than they're choosing between the over 100 different flavored seltzer waters that are out there. And the retailers are also top of mind. People are choosing to go to a grocery store that they know has everything because they want both fresh produce and shelf staples. People are choosing to go to Target because they can get their cleaning supplies and their food um, and some toys for the kids to entertain them. So right now, if you're a staple, you're there and you're getting shopped, it's probably not your brand communication that is key. If you're an indulgence, you're winning on the impulse purchase, or you might be at that e-commerce. So going back to what I mentioned before, you might be getting shopped because people are bored or people are looking at other people's recommendations and other things that they're now seeing in people's homes because we now know what everyone has in their home because we're talking on Zoom so much more. And if your product is an afterthought, not normally, but in today's environment, think about how you're still relevant to that core consumer because that person is gonna be looking for you and if you can tell them where you are found, they'll be able to find you and purchase you. Uh, what that means is if you are in a city or a, or a town that is, uh, keeps their natural stores, store food open and you're, in di you're directing people there, either on Facebook or on Instagram, you're being helpful. If you are only available on your own website, letting people know that, that you're still there, is very helpful. Hint scored a lot of points when they said, we disagree with those retailers that are doubling the price. And if you need to buy a beverage, please come to our website. We are giving a discount, we're not gouging. So this is where you live your values. Channel, grocery, drug, mass convenience, and e-commerce are winning. The ones, the brands that are winning the most are the ones that are flexible, the ones that already had an omni-channel or frictionless way of purchasing. If you can be found in many different ways, you can be found today. And supply chain, really think about what you can improve, what you can shorten, and what you can speed up. And I'll give you a couple of examples of how people are doing that. So, we may not all agree on this, but I'm going to start with a theory that chips are both a staple for some people, an indulgence for some people, and an afterthought for some people. So imagine yourself going down the aisle. You might think, oh my God, I'm going to be watching a lot of television. I need my chips. You might think, okay, I got my chicken rice pasta. Let me just get some. 
And you might have been passing by and just kind of thrown one in your grocery cart because your number one go-to is chocolate, your number two go-to is ice cream, but right now you want variability and flexibility and you're gonna have your salty chips as well. Um, so there are retail, there are brands today that are expecting other ways of getting that product packed onto the shelf. They are partnering retailer, brand, and service providers in order to make sure that the shelves are stocked so that the shoppers can get in and get out quickly. So again, it is possible to succeed today. You're not gonna do it the same way as you had planned, but if you can stay flexible, you will succeed. Really key is that you communicate with all partners now and in the near term. Retailers right now would prefer that you focus on your main SKUs, flavors, and sizes. And the reason why is because they're focused on the essentials and they are looking to minimize shelf space and just pump through um, velocity in minimum place, space possible so that they have the additional space for, um, for both cleaning supplies and paper supplies that are also part of the essentials. Distributors, you might be now telling them where are the gaps and where are the priority areas either with regarding to zip codes and regions or with regards to specific stores that you'd like that distributor to visit with your product. Influencers, knowing where their audience shops and what they're influencing their audience to go do will be really important because they will be impacting consumption and behavior. The people that are currently spending more time cooking, spending more time not just putting something quickly together to be on the kitchen table fast, but actually indulging taste and flavors and texture and teaching their kids to cook or experimenting with something different are learning how to use up, for example, spices. This now becomes something that you don't just do for special occasions when you're doing like that special dinner. It now becomes something that you might do on a more frequent basis because that is more fun than five ingredients in a crock pot. On the other hand, five ingredients in a crock pot really you know, solves the problem when you're trying to keep kids busy, going through the homeschooling and walking your dog six times a day like everyone seems to be doing. So think about what is right for your brand, what is right for your main consumer, and speak to them that way and speak to your influencers that way. Some consumers are looking for facts, including recipes, some consumers are looking for just you know, knowing that you are safe, your product was safely prepared. And some of them are looking for engagement. They're looking for entertainment. They're looking for new ways of using stuff. And finally, your strategic partners. Do they know your business? Do they know your category? And do they know your channel? Because they might see something that you don't see. They can act as your eyes and ears out in the marketplace. And they can be much, much broader than you or your team could possibly be. I'm not gonna read this through. I wanna be respectful of everyone's time. So I'm gonna just let that sit there for a minute. But what was then and what was now and what is going to be the future is changing. We're not doing trade shows. We're doing virtual meetings. I think there's a lot of people impressing with how flexible they are. Um, companies that make alcohol are now make drinkable alcohol are now making alcohol for hand sanitizer. Companies that do, um, you know, diapers are now making face masks. Um, it's really, it's an unprecedented time for people to see and show what else they can do and understand what is the priorities. So nothing pretty, end caps, displays, and attention grabbers is not what we want. We want shelf replenishment, case tax, pack outs, keep people moving through the store quickly and efficiently. Um, we used to do new SKU launches in-store and in-store demos. People now are doing, announcing their new flavors on social media, snack packs, and multi-brand collaborations. Um, I think everyone has congratulated HEB for selling their local restaurants meals in their grocery store. And that is the before and after of what that looks like in, again, something that is incredibly driven by, first of all, category and consumption, and then by what's available in that retailer, regardless of what your favorite flavor is. In this one, you're gonna go for what is lemon, if that's your favorite flavor, 
or what is grape, if that is your favorite flavor. And clearly, grape <laughs> did quite well in that store. They must have tons of kids. Long term, I'm going to say, if you challenge your assumptions and really think critically, think about what will return to a baseline, what will change forever, and what is a one-time outlier. Um, I'll give you an example that is not food related, but that everyone can probably relate to. When 9-11 happened and a lot of people were not working, um, people were staying at home, not because they had to stay inside, but because they had to, they didn't have a job. Uh, shaving went down and Gillette shares went down, but people got back to shaving, people got back to normal, and that consumption pattern didn't really change that dramatically. The people that like to be clean shaven continue to be that. The people that have a sculpted goatee continue to have that and things got back to normal. And that's something to think about is every 10 years, something does happen and we come back to a new normal. It's slightly different, but it comes back to normal. And then this is uh, going back to strategic investing 101. Um, my professor would be so proud. That's Professor Kathy Hevert of Babson. Um, the value of options and alternatives is really important right now. The brand that already invested in Omnichannel is probably really happy and proud that they did that investment. The brand that decided to go after a success in grocery to go into some other channel of retail is probably very happy that they did that. Um, the ones that had single snack packs for convenience stores and now have an eight pack family pack is probably appreciating the fact that they made that decision and worked through that packaging change when they did. Anything that you do that gives you flexibility is going to have value. And that is true, whether it's talking about a hybrid car and having the flexibility of switching between electric power and oil, whether it is cheap oil prices or expensive oil prices, or whether you're making that choice for the environment, flexibility means you will always have an option. So what you need to know for the immediate future, and some of us that love data would argue you should always want to know this, at least at critical time frame, is understand what shoppers are considering, understand what they're finding and not finding is a critical consideration today. And so knowing what is on the shelf is your game plan. To the right is what's going through the cash register. Knowing what got shopped is what you're reading on Nielsen and Spins and you know, your Walmart retail data. That is your scorecard. But you've got to do your game plan. You've got to be, I'm going to do the New England thing. You've got to be Bill Belichick. And finally, innovate. Consider this a reset button, not a um, crisis. And what that means is, if you think about the usual um, advice that you get on timing, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. So right now is a great time for you to consider what is your go-to-market strategy. And maybe it's not always gonna be trade shows in the future. Maybe you're gonna do trade shows and. Data and research will always inform what you decide if you're willing to spend the time to one, invest in it, and two, analyze it. If you mine the data that you have now from a quarter ago and from a year ago, you're going to have a much richer picture of what your brand is and represents to your consumer than if you're not focusing on that. Social media is a great way to engage with people. Um, while I've just, retail, just said that retailers are focusing on your main SKUs, this is a great time to have conversations on social media of what flavor would you like to do? Um, this would be maybe when you do mashup. If, uh, if you remember back in the day, ice cream came in single flavors and then it became chocolate chip and now it's every type of candy put together with caramel and Reese's peanut butter cups. What is the mashup that might be good for you? Or how can your product be used in a different way? You might think of it as something that you always eat out of the package straight as a snack, but it might also be really good 
as one of the, instead of a crouton on top of your salad. And I'm gonna give a shout out to my absolute favorite new snack, which has been new for about a year, um, which is Bohana's popped water lily seeds. And I saw in one of their Instagram posts that it does really well on top of a salad. And um, yes, I agree with that. It does really well on top of a salad. Um, and this is a time to think about your flavors, your sizes, and your extensions. You might have been right for launching, and you might now need to grow into what you need to be in the future. And that might be understanding what people are reaching for, and you're getting an incredible opportunity to see what people are reaching for when they're going to stay at home. So this is not the snacking that happens on road trips. This is not the food shopping that happens when you're in Napa Valley doing wine and cheese and indulging every day. This is the shopping that you're doing when you're at home with your family or at home alone or at home and you're trying not to rub off on each other too much, right? This is the time that you're getting a really good insight into what people are doing when they are at home. That's all you're seeing. Um, don't overanalyze it. Don't assume everything that's happening today is gonna to continue, but definitely read into it what might improve you for the future. Another shout out to a Boston um, food brand. One of the things that they do really well is they are on social media and they are in retail. So they are definitely found in the freezer case. This is an ice cream. And when you take the lid off their ice cream, you have one more moment to kind of interact with them and they speak to you and you now know where they are on social media. And I have to say that that is amazing. So think about how many different ways you can add in flexibility in the decisions that you make, uh, especially on packaging, because they are brilliant and have done this well for a long time. And right now it is particularly brilliant because ice cream is that one thing that I'm seeing sell out completely. And you'll finally see that one pistachio uh, pint, but it is also the, the time that people are, you know, trying and testing new things. And this might become somebody's new favorite. This one happens to be mine. I'm gonna now let you know how to reach me on social media, how to email me and let Lauren open it up for questions. Hopefully I've inspired a few. That was great. Thank you so much, Tina. Uh, so I know we're coming to 1.30. Uh, it was a great presentation, a lot of great content. So we wanted you to go. Uh, but if we do, have, we do have time for one question. So if anyone has a burning question they have for Tina, uh, we're happy to have you unmute yourself and ask it or submit it through the chat. Hi, Tina. This is Melissa Martinelli. Thanks so Hi. much for your presentation. Thank you. Um, I just had a question. You, you talked about taking advantage of this time to see what consumers are reaching for. And, and uh, I want to do that, but I don't really have access to data, especially data that's very expensive, like Spins or Nielsen. And I'm wondering, like, what, what can we do as small brands to figure out what consumers are reaching for right now? So the the very cheapest grassroots is when your friends and family members are out and about and looking at things, ask them to take pictures. I mean, I have friends taking pictures for me just because that is what we, that is what we do. Right. Um, and I just need to know kind of what is, what are people seeing that are looking at things through a different perspective? So if you have family across the, the U S ask them to take photos and then I would be remiss if I didn't let you know that as Cheap as $15 gets you the data of one store visit and, and the merchandising of making it look great on store. And right now we're also doing an offer of 100 free visits for any brand that um, reaches out to us and says, yes, I'd like to know the data of 100 stores. You tell us your retail list, your priority retailers, and we'll look for that for you. For free. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank you, Tina. All right, great. Well, we want to be respectful of people's time. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, if you have further questions for Tina, please feel free to reach out to her at any of the contact information she's provided on this slide. Um, thank you, Tina, for uh, participating today and being part of this session.
Um, going forward, uh, we hope you tune in tomorrow. Uh, we'll be speaking with Nick McCoy, who's presenting on uh, finance uh, for food businesses and the state of the industry at this time. So uh, please tune into that. It'll be a great session with Nick, um, always is. Uh, as a quick reminder, you can view all past presentations on our YouTube channel. Uh, Branch Food Now has a YouTube channel. If you just go on and search for Branch Food, you'll find all of the past presentations there, including this one, uh, hopefully by the end of today. Um, and then going forward, uh, branchfood.com slash serving up support is where all of the additional speakers are listed through April 17th. So uh, hopefully some of those uh, sessions will be of relevance to you. Um, again, please feel free to share this with any entrepreneurs or folks in the food community that you think could benefit. Um, and if you have feedback for us, we're just at info at branchfood.com and look forward to hearing from you on how you've been enjoying it uh, or suggestions that you may have going forward. So thank you again, Tina. Uh, thanks to all of you that tuned in and we look forward to seeing y'all tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye.